2023 select board meeting. It is 6.15 and uh, to conform with the open meeting law, we have posted the agenda for this meeting in three separate places mm -hmm. on our website and also have emailed the agenda and meeting invite to uh, an extensive list of people that are interested in the town. Uh, tonight, we will restrict, as we often do, uh, discussions by individuals to three minutes, um, unless we deem that uh, they can have more time, or we could go on to another person and come back to you. So, um, we will continue on to any new additions to the agenda. Hi. Oh. Uh Meaning me? Yeah, just here. So I, I don't have a big presentation. I have. Uh... It's fine. <laughs> I knew I had. I have a briefcase. I have it somewhere. You know, uh, this is just very briefly. These are figures from the engineers' report for the high school buildings. Actual costs as they determined. Uh, and I, this this is I'd like to give it to you guys. And have you? Oh wait, this is my. Should I sit down? Yep. Well, no. <laughs> you don't have to sit down. I didn't unmute or hit the recording record in progress. Oh, should I start again? Start over. <sighs> yep. We'll I'm sorry. Off. My it, bad. It was painless up until this point. Okay. <laughs> so this is a list of specific costs to fix the high school building as prepared by the Black Rivers Engineer Report from 2019. It's very specific. Here's how much the heating costs. Here's the roof. Here's, okay. I think it's very important that everybody. We're just putting you on the agenda right now. Oh. So we're gonna, oh, we're, you're bringing discussion about the high school. Yeah, but I didn't yeah. need a big discussion. I just wanted to give you that and, and ask you to talk about it at a later time. I don't. I'm not. I know it's a busy we'll night. Put you on the agenda. Okay. We'll be right back. Um, I'm so, disappointed. <laughs> start over. Martha, is there something that you need to say? Before it's we... just that um, I couldn't hear Robert, and I I have had I have trouble hearing people sometimes. So if everybody could speak up, that would be really nice. And thank you. Okay. Right. In the beginning of the meeting was muted. I do apologize. That was my error. So Pat is going to start from the beginning. You didn't miss. Okay. Time. Thank you. I, I was going to say, I didn't hear anything at the beginning. I'm sorry. That's why I was waving my hand. <laughs> Good evening. It is now 617. Welcome to the Select Board Meeting, Town of Rochester, February 13th. Uh, we are, this uh, meeting has been uh, conform, does conform to the open meeting law because it, the agenda has been posted in three places on the town website and it has been emailed to the list of all interested parties. Tonight we're going to ask that uh, discussions, and we often do this, uh, are kept to a three minute time limit. We could come back to you if you have more to add, or if we agree that you can continue, we can, but we do ask that you respect the three minute time limit. Um, Rob Gardner has an, an addition to the agenda that he wants to submit some information about the high school building. Um, can we put you at the end? You can do whatever you want. I'm it happy. might be a minute. You are now on the agenda. Uh, we have reviewed prior meeting minutes. Um, the select board meeting that was that took place on January 23rd, 2023. I have read over the meeting minutes and yeah, I good. propose that we accept the minutes. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> and we also have emergency meeting minutes, which was budget related. On January 25th, 2023, I have read those very short minutes and have approved it. I second that. I have to. All in favor? Right. Uh, first item on our agenda is correction to Article 4 on the town warning. Um, that is a minor type of adjustment due to, I'm going to say, a spreadsheet for you. Formula. In our um, meeting minutes <clears throat> that we approved, we had said the voters would authorize a budget of $1,313,277, of which 920, 21,967 would be raised by taxes. Those numbers replace 
1,314,749, of which $923,439 were to be raised by taxes. So the adjustment was downward. Um, I move that we uh, approve the adjustment to Article 4 on our town report. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Just save some money. Jordan didn't join in, did he? No. No. He said, <laughs> he, said he might. He's heading to the hills, he said. Yeah, I don't blame him. He sent me a message. Um, number three, we have on our agenda a shelter team discussion. Hi, Jan. Hi. What would you like to discuss tonight? Uh, just a uh, shelter opening. Uh, we uh, are communicating. I've been talking to um, Martha. Can't hear you, Jan. Would you be the I'm able sorry. to come to the front? Yeah. Um, okay, Martha, we'll we, try it. We are sorry. Gonna, so, we want to talk about when to open the shelter and a warming shelter as well. We also need to talk about the updated MOU we have with the Gifford Hospital to use the clinic space in an emergency. And I just had a generator question for staff. Just okay. to find out what, if it was serviced and if it's on a schedule for filling. We can answer that question. Yes, it was. We just paid that bill. It was yep. over six hundred dollars for a good a good servicing. Good. We also just had the fuel tank filled too. For that. Okay. Yep. And it's on a schedule in the future too. We made sure it's put on good. Thank you. going forward. What do you propose for criteria for opening the shelter? You want it to have something in writing? Uh, currently, we have a, a select board, or is it um, Justice of the Peace meeting? It's a select board. Board of Civil Authority. Board of Civil Authority. The town gets calls. The clerks call the select board. You decide if you want to open it, and then you call me and Leslie. Right, and I believe we I believe we go to the Board of Civil Authority for that for for that. You don't have to ask them for that. No. 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 Okay. No. no. They're not involved. That makes no. Yeah. yeah. But the my my last time this last cold snap, a lot of places had no power for extended period, so they wanted. If you were listening to the radio and watching online. A lot of towns opened an emergency warming shelter mm -hmm. just, you know, for the day people come get warm, charge their devices, uh, have a place to be warm. Um, I wanted to have that automatic, depending on weather and other situations, if there's a call. If there's a call to open the shelter, we'll do it. But I would mm -hmm. like to be able to just open a shelter for warming if the power outages over 24 hours okay well we were monitoring that situation right. um, all three of us select board members were in town and we were all up on our toes we did not have any power outages in Rochester is that correct well we did that one yeah, weekend we did that one weekend but cold snap not yeah. for the cold yeah. snap no. but uh, ice storm? Yeah, back in December. The first week we had the miserable weather. We had quite a few power outages, and we were on the cusp of whether or not we should open it. Mm -hmm. um, I was in contact with uh, Green Mountain Power as I used to work there, so I know some people there and talked to them, and they were on the job and said they would have services available by a certain amount of time, and they pretty much held that to the T. So. We kind of knew which places were going to come on and when they were going to get on. So it pretty much put the emergency uh, repeater on for you guys on the fire department. I know they did that the same day. They, they did a lot of others. So um, we, we were on top of that. We just, um, no protocol really for us to open it up. And, and we did talk amongst ourselves about whether or not we should do that. So. We, we are handling that, but we do, I think in the future, we do need to have a, a way forward with that to make sure we're addressing the issues. Uh, Go ahead, Les. I'm Leslie Strauss. I'm on the shelter team as well. I think what we probably are going to propose uh, um, and ask you at some point to vote on is that 
that a warming shelter open up given the power is out 24 hours and the temperature is 10 degrees. I mean, some number, like a 10 degree uh, parameter. And then people can come, get warm, charge their cell phones, get a hot drink, maybe a hot soup. And then, you know, we don't have to set up beds until we say, okay, well, now we need a shelter. So it would just be a warming center. Right. right. Now and, we, and that would be an automatic, um, right. knowing that we have a, you know, a formula to. We work. had a, a call in with, I called in with Lynn, Lindy, the, uh, the principal down here. Uh, and well. we were trying to figure out how we needed to work it with school being in session and that was mm -hmm. an issue that we had to address at that point too and so we had given her a heads up on whether or not we were going to do that and if we were thinking that we should and so she was aware of it also and and that's one thing with the emergency shelter it does affect if there's school kids and all that so we have to be concerned there Another thing that we do have, though, is this Why? building. Sorry. Why? Well, w because of the school kids. What about them? Well, just if you have a bunch of people running around, it kind of interrupts what they're trying to do what down there as teaching. Running around. <laughs> Sorry. But, Frank. no, but I mean the kids, you know, they, yeah, with well, the kids being there, it's in school time. Right. And there's a whole different thing. But we do have this building that has an emergency generator also, and we can bring this building into play if we need to, this, yeah, this right, section right. here. Good. we do have so that yeah. that is available so also. perhaps uh defining uh a level one or a level two mm -hmm. type of shelter opening like you said uh you know the beds don't have to come out but we want to provide warm and, and charging stations so that that could be defined that way and this building could supply that if right. needed Right, and if there's too many people down there and school is in session, I mean, chances are if it's bad enough that the power's out, that people are looking for a place to stay, the kids aren't going to be in school. That's true. But at you know, this one if, point, if they we open there. while the kids, school is in session, kids can get their lunch and go to their rooms and eat it or something like that. It, I don't foresee it as a huge issue. Um, so we well, uh, have to coordinate that with the school. Right, and Lindy told me that. That doesn't seem to be an issue. So, we have Lindy on Zoom, and she's just unmuted. Do you have something to add? Yeah, I was just going to say. Um, I think probably three years ago, pre-COVID, that would be a harder switch mm -hmm. than it is right now. We have figured out how to do lunch in classrooms and some other things. So, like Frank said, he and I were in touch that weekend, and so we're happy to support and open up. We just need a little bit of notice, uh, usually about the night before, and we can pretty much. We're pretty good at adapting at this point in time to make sure it serves all. It just really would, um, and that can also include coning off part of the space if we need to, to divide the two and making it work if we were to get in that spot. I will also share that our superintendent is big on going to school in inclement weather. So that first storm, you know, Friday was really bad, but had it been a Thursday and roads were cleared on Friday, we probably would have come to school at least for a part of a day. So, um, but like I said, we're willing to be able to support everybody in that situation. Okay, so if we come up with some parameters, then we'll present that at another time, just so you, you all know about it. Right. And, I can't and keep Lindy in the loop. Yeah, yeah, we do. So, do you want me to talk about the MOU? Yes. We had an MOU pre-COVID. I can't hear anything. Is anybody else having trouble hearing out there? Like maybe I, am. I feel like you can hear everything. We're not getting. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if one per like if Leslie or Jan one person is further away from the mic than the other, but yeah. it kind of goes in and out depending on which one of you is speaking. It's a little. I have to keep um, adjusting the volume. Okay. So it makes it good for people in the audience if you could stand up or come up front and speak loud, please. Sorry. That's okay. Pre-COVID, the shelter team had an MOU with Gifford Hospital to have access to the clinic space if we have a huge emergency and the town is closed off again like it was before. Uh, we can access the clinic space and do triage or see people over there instead of at the school. So that's what the MOU is about. So we're resurrecting that again just so we have that communication with them and that that, that okay. So. Uh, the, 
VP, Vice President of Re what's her name? O'Berry, Rebecca O'Berry, is going to rework the old MOU. And when I get that, I'll give it to the select board. Okay, great. Yeah, it just it just says that in times of emergency yes. we have access, and I'm hooked up with Jessica Springer, the nurse at the clinic. Mm -hmm. So we'll have keys and access. Okay, and for those that wonder what an MOU is, it's a memorandum of understanding. Thank you, Thank you Jan. Uh, number four on our list is review of January Treasurer's Report. Um, I did earlier this afternoon, yeah, and I saw it. Frank do it too. So we have reviewed it. Um, I think that we're right on target. Yeah. Um, all in all, we're about 57% through our year, and uh, we look to be right pretty much on target. I saw no major anomalies No red there. flags yet. Yeah. No. So that is approved. Uh, number five, we have a farmer's market park use <coughs> application. This is for May 26th through October 6th on Friday afternoon between 3 and 6 o'clock. Um, Rochester Fire uh, Farmers Market is a community event bringing together local farmers, producers, and supportive <coughs> consumers. This is a volunteer-run event. Purpose, local agriculture, community <coughs> building for the benefit of the Rochester community. Um, there also is a certificate of insurance to prove that they have the liability. Um, is there any discussion about the farmers market? I guess I'd like to just throw in one thing. It seems perhaps a little early to apply, but the reason for that is that the planning process is already underway, getting the musicians, getting the vendors together, and the vendors also have to make a decision whether they'll vend at the market and uh, or if it'll be available to vend at. It, uh, for some people, it's a, a fair chunk of their, uh, of their income. And that's why it's being applied for now, rather than right before the event. We are in the beginning stages of rewriting the park ordinance. It hasn't been revised since 1995. And so Nancy and I have started the process of doing that with some rule changes. Um, and we're not sure what those are going to be at this time. But we will keep that in mind when with this and we'll go from there. But we just started doing that a week ago and we haven't really... Do you have any idea what these rule changes might be? Uh, not at this point, we really don't. We're just revising it because it hasn't been done in so long and it's so vague and and uh, we think down the road it needs to change. So we're, we're in the process of looking what other towns do and how they look at their parks and and those types of things. There may be some usage fees involved, we're not sure, but we're looking into that. Do Rochester residents have a say in what rules? Uh, we will post, a, um, if we decide to do a, a revision of that, we will, it'll be changed and there'll be public comment, yes. Martha has something on Zoom. You're muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, Frank. I, the reason I, I wanted to ask something was um, I'm uh, the producer for the players of our Harvest Fair that we have on the park every year. We've had 30 some odd years there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not hearing that you're going to be making changes like we wouldn't be allowed to do things like that, are you? No, 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 no. They're just okay. revising the rules on the use. That's all. And, okay, and, we and also to, um, we need to look at those. I'm sorry. I organized the Fourth of July parade, and usually there's a, a barbecue, you know, right after the parade. That kind of stuff. That kind of stuff is probably still going to be okay, right? It sounds like it. Oh yeah. The, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, work. I just wanted to 
to check because it sounded like you were going to make some changes and that's fine but um i just wanted to make sure that those two two um events in particular are things that are kind of a tradition in town every year and yeah, town town sponsors events aren't going to change much at all, Martha. We're just trying to revise okay. the usage of of the park by outside people and influence, okay. and, and we need to make some uh, certain rules to going forward in the future that there is some rules that need to be uh, corrected. Okay, thank you. Yep, Thanks. you're welcome. Plus, I apologize if, if you said this already. Do you have a time frame on when you're going to have the review done? No, we don't really have a schedule. It's kind of okay. whenever we can get well, it. Well, I mean, back to Kevin's the, point, I mean, people are trying to plan you, there, and the you, longer we wait, or, yeah. you plan your event. I mean, we're not going to yeah. say you can't use it. We're okay. not doing that. Okay. We just need That's, to revise how, what types of usage we're going to have and whether or not we should be permitting fees for the usage or not okay. those type of things okay. alcohol and drugs are you know oh, yeah. there's no rules on those yes right. go ahead so and it's also going to apply to the other parks that we have in open spaces that we have in town the ball fields the park up here and because our ordinance doesn't include every all the parks mm -hmm. we have so mm -hmm. we're just trying to revise it and catch it up to date okay. and so it will be a something that and the public can look at it before we even adopt it, but and it'll be put out there. So. Plus, we've had some uh, experts checking out the <coughs> health of our park and the trees and um, the, the health of the, the sod and all of that. And uh, we're getting into a grant on um, replacing some of the trees on the park. So we're involved in an ongoing analysis of the health of our park as well. So it all is going to just run together. So are we approving this application? Sure. I, 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 do need, I do need I do need to note that it's not signed, so we will get that yeah, signature. Unfortunately, I picked that up for Aja, and she's very sick at the moment. So yeah, I will. Tell so her. we will approve it yeah. when she picks it up. She can sign it. Yes, I will let her know that. Oh, well, thank you. Appreciate it. Yep. It's a great thing. So many people use it. It's wonderful. <laughs> I don't know if you sign it or not. It doesn't uh, say where to sign it. Go ahead and sign it. Um, you like signature? <laughs> yeah. Just sign it. Just sign it, babe. Try to move through these quick things here. Number six on our agenda is CAI Technology Tax Map Contract. This is an annual contract. Uh, for updating our tax maps, which is utilized electronically and on paper. Um, it's a reference for many people looking at their property. It's a reference for realtors. It's reference for a lot of different people, surveyors. So um, it is a requirement for us to do it every year. And this year, the cost is $1,975 plus $20 for every building added or changed. So it'd probably come in less than $2,500 a year for this, pro for this process. So I move that we approve the contract for tax map maintenance proposal. Second. All in favor? No. Aye. Aye. We will have new tax maps. The next piece of business we have on our agenda is approved tobacco and second class liquor license for what we know as the Skip Mart. Um, there are new owners and they are applying for both tobacco and second class license, which is not a liquor liquor license, it's beer and wine. Um, the business entity is Kahalsa Market um, out of Albany, New York. And so I move that we approve that they can get themselves in business for tobacco and beer and wine. I second that. All in favor? All right. And again, I don't see where they want us to sign any letter. Uh, it's all done digitally. I just wanted you to see it. 
Do you want to see it? Yeah. No, I don't need to. And upon this permit here, I did speak with, with Peter about the snow issue that they have there mm -hmm. in the winter time. Um, I don't know as if we can really force a change on that, but I do think that, um, and I asked him, he's going to be in charge of that for spring cleanup this year, um, but we'll need to address it down the road for cleanup and make sure they're aware that if they put their snow over there, they got to be responsible for cleaning that up. So as it would become be a factor in the health of our park. Right, right exactly. <laughs> But they don't have a place to put the snow, and, and it's going to be more of a hazard if, if we just have them pile it up in the yard, I think, and uh, have it all the way every storm would seem a little hard to, hard to deal with without hiring somebody to do it. So. Uh, number eight on our list is signed certification for compliance for VTRANS fiscal year 24 town highway grant. Um, this is another annual thing that we do and we certify that we uh, <clears throat> still have the same amount of roads and that we understand pretty much the orange book um, town road and bridge standards and that um, the standards that were adopted on July 8th 2019 we further certify our adopted standards do meet or exceed the minimum requirements included in June 5th, 2019 state approved templates. Um, we do have an up-to-date highway network inventory, which includes location, size, deficiency, condition of roads, bridges, causeways, culverts, and highway-related retaining walls on all our class one, two, and three town highways, which we do have. Um, somebody does go around and take an inventory of that. Thank you, John Champion. Um, so we're going to sign this and send it off to the state so that we get support grant money for our roads. And I will put today's date on it. Yeah. That's a good idea. Okay. Thank you. I think. I think. Okay. Number nine on our agenda is preliminary discussion of districting, redistricting, districting, first responder services um, for our valley. Um, I have some things that I could be reading here, um, and then we can have discussion about where we're going to go from this point forward. Uh, I'm going to start by referencing that uh, WRVA is WERVA, the White River Valley Ambulance Service, which is a full ambulance rescue service. GFR is Granville First Responders, volunteers at different levels of training to provide immediate service while WERVA is on route. I also want to note that due to HIPAA requirements, uh, no names will be mentioned in this statement. <laughs> so I'm going to start with a timeline back December of 2021 a year and a month, two months ago, a Rochester res resident lodged a complaint with the select board that their 911 call for assistance went unanswered by GFR. Due to the severity of the medical emergency, coupled with the severity of the weather at that time, this resident was further traumatized by the event and the lack of assistance because GFR did not respond. As a member of the select board and a Rochester resident that has a scanner at home, I inserted myself as the point person to look into the complaint. During January of 2022 through September of 2022, I paid special attention to emergency calls and the GFR activities and attendance to calls. During my monitoring, I did notice several calls for assistance going unanswered by GFR through dispatch while also noting WERVA providing perfect response rate. In October and November of 2022, I had conversations with some GRF, GFR members looking for further insight in the health of this organization. The Rochester Budget and Finance Committee requested the annual meeting with the GFR director, resulting in two cancellations by the director. The GFR budget was submitted, but no opportunity was provided for our questions to be posed. 
In November and December, I spoke with other Valley Select Board members about Rochester's concerns, and they shared their own opinions on the level of service their own residents had com commented upon. In December of 2022, I requested from WERVA the facts of the response rates for GFR during 2022 and received a spreadsheet shortly thereafter noting that 44% of the calls in Rochester were not responded to by GFR. It was noted by WERVA that perhaps some of those listed as not responded could have been an error by WERVA, a WERVA member filling out the paperwork. Since the Budget and Finance Committee was unable to connect with the GFR director for this annual meeting, it was incorporated into a Rochester Select Board meeting so that the director could then attend as he works outside the valley and is unable to attend meetings between 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. weekdays. At that meeting, discussion with the director about response rate as well as WERVA spreadsheet concerns and questions were discussed. His rebuttal was offered verbally and in a summary letter with no facts to substantiate his responses. In January of 2023, Budget and Finance Committee recommended to the Select Board a reduction in funding and the Select Board agreed and decided to reduce funding by 50% of the GFR request for the upcoming budget. WERVA budget, finance, budget funding request for 23-24 was accepted in full, including a $7,000 plus increase. Their services are not in jeopardy. A letter in mid-January was sent to GFR noting our desire to see improvements in response rate by way of additional membership during daytimes and correction to technical issues that have been ongoing for over a year. Rochester Select Board has an open door to GFR and will always be ready to revisit funding along with their progress and resolution of issues that they themselves have admitted to. There was never any concern for quality of care, albeit limited, and never any criticizing of personnel that volunteer, that is completely uncompensated as stipends previously paid have been revoked in the past years. The decision that the uh, Rochester Select Board made cannot be reversed at this, this time, but it can be adjusted at town meeting. I have an employee at my hardware store that is a member of GFR, and I recently allowed my employee to leave work to respond to emergency calls in Rochester. I strongly urge all Valley employers to look at their employees, and if they are responders, allow them to lend assistance to calls when possible and encourage any employees that have interest to enlist and empower them to receive training and become a trained medical person. Having a trained medical person nearby, no matter what level of training it may be, is an asset to our entire valley. Front Porch Forum Chatter has solicited donations to bridge the gap, and I can say that my husband and I have already sent our donation. If you support GFR, you can do so too. Going forward into the future, it seems every so many years, rescue services in our valley are reassessed. At this time, there are discussions started and pending regarding the status of the first response of medical services throughout our valley, including research into ways to make the service more efficient, both financially and productively. Our valley demographic has also evolved into a need for recreational and backcountry services that must be incorporated into future requirements of this field. Coordination of efforts, perhaps as a district or a satellite of WERVA, can bring forward a stronger alliance that as a result could provide a higher level of service to all. Perhaps the result of our research will reveal we are at the best level of service, but we will not know without taking a step back and looking at all aspects and options. There's also Two Rivers um, Atacuichi Regional Commission is looking into something called shared services. Um, they are looking about joining resources for, re for surrounding towns. Currently, they're looking at Stockbridge, Pittsfield, and Rochester. But um, as a district, forming districts instead of individual towns, this is something that we could be looking forward to. The state is encouraging us to do so. Um, those discussions will be taking place in early March. 
There's also a meeting with Werva this coming week um, uh, about the services and if there was anything that they can lend to improve the service. Hey, Leslie. A district of what? A new ambulance service? Um, or a, a fast squad district? Fast squad, probably. Um, we're just all ears at this point, so whatever so concept may fit. the is just to penalize the group and there are first responders, just penalize them financially? That's the first decision I, to I make. think a couple things need to be understood here. We started this process in September, and we go through putting the budget together. Your husband was involved with this. He knows how all this works, and I'm sure you do too, but for the public. We start out by having every department head bring in their budgets. And we were the girls put them in the proper spaces, and we process the budgets through the budget and finance group and the select board. And we discuss with the department heads what they're addressing in their budgets. And the way it worked here, with Granville's not having responded to a lot of calls, we have no um, way of fixing that. That's up to Granville to fix that. And when we talked this out with budget and finance, it was discussed that if we have an issue with money and we address it that way, we'll get some chatter on this. So people will come forward and we can address it publicly. If we just funded it straight up, then no one's going to talk about this and the service may be there or not. And one of the questions that came up in the budget and finance is if we're paying for emergency service and they don't show up, is it still an emergency service? So we had to address that. And that's, we did it this way. It, the, the, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the town budget can be amended at town meeting. That's not a problem. But this brings it to the public in front so that we know that there's an issue here. And if Granville can't respond to an emergency, then and we're paying for an emergency service and it's not being addressed, then what are we paying for? We don't have any uh, way to fix what the issues are. It's Granville's responsibility to do that. Now, whether they can or not, that remains to be seen. But as a select board, we wouldn't be doing justice to what we're supposed to do if we didn't bring it to the attention. And the only way we could do that was to cut some funding. So it would be addressed through social media or wherever because people get all wound up when, you know, for whatever reason, and things are said that are not accurate on social media. And we're just trying to address the issue. And that's all it is. Go ahead, Terry. You guys forget you guys are forgetting. This is a hundred percent volunteer. Oh, we understand. All, that. all these guys work other jobs. No different fire departments. I get it. And you can't that. say that somebody's going to be able to go, drop what they're doing, and be there. I know, but and it's if an you, emergency you guys service. You gave up on Valley is. Rescue. So you gave up on having somebody on call 24-7. So you can't expect that same service from a volunteer department. I'm just addressing the issue, and that's the way the budget and finance come, people looked at it, and that's the way the board looked at well, it. Well, maybe we some have of the to ones on we have to address the issue. volunteering for, to drop what they're doing and, and go to a call whenever. Yeah, that could be true. But and maybe they'd see the other light. That's the way we are addressing it, so let's talk about it. Go ahead, Jan. I have two questions. The first one is... The Budget and Finance Committee, they make recommendations, but they can go. you can go ahead and adopt those without any input from the town, from the residents? Um, we, we put it on the agenda, we look at it, and then we go. And it's not a, uh, how, do we, how do you say it? Oh, we put it in our town budget, we approve the budget, and we present right. it to the town at town meeting. Right, but not during you the have, process. You have not, the right not, at town meeting. Before the that. Yeah, it's all in the process. And those meetings are open to the public. Right, right. I yeah. understand. Yeah. So, uh, can I ask a question of Dan? Yep. Yeah. How much does it cost? How many hours of training does a responder have to have? 
So to become an EMT, it's 200 hours of training. That can take well over a year to complete. These courses are about $1,200 to actually get enrolled in. Um, you know, the, the money that you cut out of our budget, that was critical to us training additional members to our team. Critical. It was also critical for us to have that money so that we can actually supply the members of our team. If we're going to equip our EMTs with an AED and a medical bag and all the supplies to fill it, you're looking at well over two grand to make that happen. Dan, how much does the test cost? The Dan? test? Just the written test is $60 to sit for the test. Right, plus the time. And right. what about your certific recurring certifications? Yeah, it's 24 hours of training every every research period. So they're it's putting 40 all for this, EMTs. They're putting 40 for EMTs. It's 40 for now. EMTs, first responders. 24, 24. For, for myself at an EMR level. Yeah, so all that upfront money plus the time. Plus paying for the continuing education courses too. Right, okay, okay, so that, that's a lot. So we cut $3,200 from the budget. If I may. And, and we did it for the reason just this right here to talk it out to figure out where well, to go from here you know frank i think there's a major objection to the manner in which this was uh, presented this process was not transparent in any way the budget and finance minutes do not reflect any discussion of slashing the first response budget or any of the concerns that you may have had with the service that you were receiving. The first step would have been to contact me directly and ask me direct questions about what's going on. That would have been step one. Step two, take a look at our MOU. And that MOU states that there is a board position for Rochester and Hancock, a voting board position, and you have never appointed somebody to that board. That would be your direct link to us to know exactly what is going on. So we did invite you to come speak to the board, the budget and finance, as we do every year in September, yes, October, November. There was nothing to indicate that this was anything other than the normal every year howdy do. Well, here's our budget. Even if it was just a normal visit and we we did not get the opportunity to speak with you at all until into December. And I presented you with a call information and I told you the problem that we were having you were, you were was a to dispatch the issue. Yes, to the board. Yes. yes. The See, issue that we were having was a dispatch issue. That was nothing that we, we could control. There, there was an issue. There, there is an issue. But there, slashing there. our budget is not going to change the dispatching issue that we were facing. What is that issue? Is it state coordination? Yes. Yeah, okay. And it because is a, they downsized? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, our dispatching centers are were so undermanned, they were not able to properly dispatch the agencies that were necessary to respond to calls. They would send an ambulance and forget about first response because they had to take another call. It was that simple. If and if you had asked me up, directly, this, this, you would have received that has, answer. This has all been made. There's, there's no adjustment to it until we go to town meeting. So right. the budget is lodged. So. And at, 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 at the town meeting, somebody stands up and makes a motion. And we yeah, right. and yeah. Your, your books are When printed. you vote on the budget, that's where you can do it. Okay. And it's not, a, it's not a major pile of money, but it was brought up that the services weren't being met. So 
you know, how do we look at that as a town? We don't have any way to adjust anything else. If we receive complaints from our residents, we have to look into it. And that's why it came up. Question? Yes. yes. I have a question. Uh, yeah. If the, uh, oh, excuse me, it's a question there. I have just a quick question. I understood from the Front Porch Forum, uh, Mary McGrath. Thank you. Okay. Um, is the Granville Fire Department changing their dispatch? There was some mention that it was going to Middlebury. I understand that they have, uh, again, changed their mind and is staying with the dispatch they currently have out of Royalton. Now, we are currently staying with Rockingham Dispatch because they have made changes in their dispatching procedure and updated their software. And in the, okay. last, in the last two months, the dispatching errors have been minimal and minor. Uh, we believe that the dispatching service we're receiving now is capable of suiting our needs. Um, Thank you. That's good to hear. <clears throat> Kevin. If the budget is amended from the floor in town meeting, uh, the select board is not required to put that money toward rescue. Uh, what's your feeling? Would, would that money be put toward rescue if, if somebody if, stood up and wanted to add it back on? If that was the desire of the vote, yes. Okay, but you're not required to do, do that, but you're feeling with the information you have now, which is good to open up this dialogue, mm -hmm. right? That that could that could happen. Yeah, absolutely. And and we encourage it to happen if the voters want that to see that happen. I mean, we're we're just bringing attention to the fact that we weren't getting the service and we needed to find out why, and we had a miscommunication. We were under the gun as far as getting the the uh, <coughs> town reports out, so we needed to come to an agreement on what we should do. And we couldn't just fund it with the complaints that we were getting. And those weren't just from uh, voters, from people that didn't get service. They were from our own uh, people in, in the fire department that were complaining about this. So the only way we could address it was financially, because we can't fix the way Granville operates. We don't do that. You know, we have to accept their budget. And also a couple years ago, we took Granville and Werva out of the appropriations so they could go into the regular budget under the general side of it. So that put them in the category to, to have an annual meeting with the Budget and Finance Committee to explain their budgets. And we did that because they're first responders and we felt it wasn't fair to them to have to get signatures to be on the warning for town meeting in the appropriation side of the, the equation. Like the library does, like um, any, any change in the budget that's, you know, you have to get a signatures to, to alter whatever you do, like uh, any of the appropriation services like the, the fast uh, garbage out here. They have to, if their budget changes, they have to get signatures by some a percentage of the voters in order to get on the warning to raise money. Right, I understand that. Okay. I guess I'm just a little disappointed that it, that it came to this. Well, and it's good it did. It's okay. actually, a, it, it's good it did too, but you have to think, as Terry said, these are all volunteers, and which means they're people, and it, it kills morale. I can think of how firefighters would feel if our budget was cut for, because, for any any reason, and it, it right. just it hurts morale a lot, which is very important. Well, the fire department's budget's a little different. They come in and we go through the budget with the fire chief, and yeah, we right. sit down and and do that through appropriations. And in this case, that didn't happen. No, I, White, I White River Valley, uh, the ambulance came in, and we spent an entire session with them, and they went through their budget piece by piece. And we offered this up to Granville, and it got canceled two or three times, and it got down to the wire where we had to make a decision. And we made a decision, and obviously people, you know, this is a good decision because we got to talk this out. 
and that's the best way forward. So we now we know what's going on. So that's good. I'm also going to object to that statement that the meeting was canceled with myself multiple times. I was offered a date, and it was the wrong date, and I didn't show up to that. Is that correct, Kristen? Yeah. Yeah, it was something like I said Tuesday the 13th, and it was really Tuesday the 12th or something like that. It was a so immediately after that, I offered two other dates where I could be present in person yep. to address your issues. Which I gave to the select board. The only indication. The select board or the, or the budget and finance? Budget and finance. The right. only indication that you had any issues with the service it was presented to me on right around Christmas Eve. I spent my Christmas day and Christmas Eve going through call logs and conducting a call analysis so that I could present you with the information on the 26th during your select board meeting. Dan, do you, does the, does the, does the first responders, when there's a call, after there's a call, do you send a survey out to ask opinions or ask if the needs are met or ask for satisfaction or do you do any after call stuff like that? Uh, no, we have not conducted any surveys like that. Um, well, the, I, the, that's a good way to find out if your people are satisfied. Yeah. I do know that oftentimes we do see, see donations and right. thank you cards sent to us soon after we respond to a call. When you attend the WERVA meetings, because you are a board member for WERVA, um, uh, are you at that point reviewing call logs that they have to see whether your attendance was checked off the list or not? At that level, they are not looking at that. Okay. No. Perhaps you should if you think that you're, be, you're not no, being credited. Current, currently, <clears throat> I am receiving calls for White River Valley Ambulance so I can directly compare notes. We have not missed a call. No, not since December 20th. I've had an update to the spreadsheet. And thank you for that. Yeah, White River Valley is keeping track of their information much better now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, that's Nancy, good. Did you have something to say, Nancy? You had your hand up? No, I was just going to say it is a line item in the budget, and that's how it would get discussed and amended. Okay. Yep. I think Dan and all the volunteers deserve our debt of gratitude for the work they do. There's never any, and there's never any doubt of that. Okay. So it seems to me if, if you guys, if there was a member on their board, there would have been an avenue for communication for all this True. in the first place. Because this is, this is pretty awkward. I understand what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> I see a volunteer. <laughs> well. Maybe that's another discussion. <laughs> but, but it seems like it's a big it's a communication thing. But if you had somebody uh, on on their board, it would bring it to them, and then it would be much more. It it should. It's probably something we should put into our appointments, and um, that's another thing that we need to discuss. But right now, it's pretty hard to find anybody to be on any appointment, and that's a that's an issue too. But. I think it is something that we need to add into our town report as an appointed position to represent that, and that's a good that's a good deal. Which there. happens in about a month. Yep. So we can address that. Mm -hmm. That might be a good thing to do, Robert. Thanks. So through this whole scuttlebutt, I've heard that Rochester is interested in going with Middlebury Ambulance. Uh, I don't know I anything about that. that. No, okay. I haven't Absolutely heard anything. Absolutely not. All right. No, just no. Wilma, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> no, the response and the and the care that comes from them is is top notch and very timely. Mm -hmm. We do have Matt Parrish on Zoom. If anybody has anything directed towards him, questions, just so you know. Mm -hmm. All set? 
Thank you all. Is that Rob? Am I up? Um, yeah, let's do Rob. Then there's a thing for small grants that was a new item as well. Rob. So uh, uh, I've been concerned about what to me is a lack of financial detail clarifying the, the real costs and risks in the high school project. I think there's a lot of information about vision, but uh, the actual information of the condition of that building and what it would cost to fix it is available. And it's available in that uh, engineer's report, but it's all mixed in with all three buildings. So uh, the document I gave you is, is pulling the high school costs out and putting them in a list. Because um, the Black River report was for both buildings, wasn't it? All three buildings. All three buildings. All three buildings. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, so I, I, it's information I think should be publicly discussed and publicly available. Uh, and, and I would hope you guys maybe at another meeting can look at that and see if it's how you could, how you could make it public or have a discussion about it. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, this is such so so largely a matter of money. The cost is so great uh, that, that an understanding of the money, the costs and the and the liabilities is very important. And I hope, in the same way that if you're going to buy a house and you're to have a, a building inspector, house inspector go through and for termite damage and they give you a report, this that's exactly what this is on a large scale for the high school building. So. Um, that's what I gave to you. I gave you six, six copies of in case you want to share it with your mom or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yep. So, yeah. Rob, the figures that you were using go back to 19, 19, 2018 and 2019? 2019 it was released, so they're, they're, we hired So now they're, they're four years yeah. to five years old. Yeah. So you can add 30 to 40 percent. I think the, uh, re the feasibility study bumped them from two million two to three million. So everything has gone up, um, and I'm not I'm not advocating one way or another. I'm just saying I think everybody really ought to know just how big a barrel they're stepping into or not. All right. And uh, that's why I gave you that. And I hope you can, and I'll be happy to come back and talk about it at if an item. Although I'm no expert on, I'm not an engineer. Right. There's but. still a lot of hurdles to jump before we even get to that point, and hurdles keep popping up. Um, going through the, the Borella process, which is a brownstone investigation, and they have uncovered a couple more hurdles during their phase one, which was just a paperwork investigation um, of, um, at one time, the uh, Skipmart had an underground fuel tank leak, which is always on the record and never goes away. So there's some concern about investigating the soils down at the high school because of the close proximity to the gas station on whether or not there's leaking fuel under there. Um, it was also discovered that, what most of us know, that before it was a high school, long before that, there was also a railroad and a mill underneath that ground and so there's some concern about that too. So in addition to the underground oil tank, there's some, some underground issues that might need to be monitored before we would be able to qualify to apply for any fun federal funding. Um, the latest hurdle is the possibility um, of having to go through Act 250 if it transfers and is no longer a school. So it was suggested that we approach the Act 250 Agency Natural Resources Board and ask for something called a jurisdictional review um, where they would look at it to determine whether or not we would need to go through Act 250 in order to proceed with the state. So, um, the hurdles keep popping up, and um, we're just the, we're just going to keep on going until um, it it seems as though the hurdles are going to drop down, or they're just going to continue to pile up. But we are still doing that due diligence in in going as far forward as we can to see if we can make just get to the point of getting any funding for the building in any way, shape, or form. So. Um, that's where that stands right now. Well, thanks. I, I mean, my only point is that all of this should be as public as possible. 
everybody should know the risks. I mean, I'm not surprised that that this kind of thing will continue to be just go on and take more time. But it still has to be heated. There's still, you know, uh, and and I just it may, may may be a bug I have, but I just don't get the feeling that people in town are really getting the full picture of uh, what the liabilities are, what the time frame is. I mean, I, way back in. 2019, the, the school board kind of thought this was going to be a snap. <laughs> you know, Here, can I have it for a buck? Yeah. Um, the, uh, the, the process is, it's all government, red tape, bureaucracy, handouts when you're, when you're looking for free money. It's a long road to yep. get there. Um, so the good news is that the high school made it through the recent cold snap without a problem. <laughs> so... <laughs> I was down there just last week. Mm. It's she's she's cooking That's along. Good. She's probably using some oil, but yeah. she's cooking along good. <laughs> well, thanks. That was my point. So, point taken. I just have a really quick question. I'm Jamie. I um, just this might have been discussed before, but what would happen if all these red tapes piled up and you couldn't do anything? What would happen with that building? The school system would retain the building as part of the part of the school campus. And then they could do whatever they decide to do with it from that point forward. Okay. Kevin. They actually own it. <laughs> yeah. Still, it, though. Yeah. They own it. Okay. I, mm -hmm. I realize the school owns it, as Nancy just said. Is the idea of a private sale to an outside buyer been considered at all? I don't, I don't know if the select board would be privy to that information. It was considered initially, and it was actually the school... The school board at that time, that school board confronted several realtors, um, commercial realtors, and could not get a realtor that wanted to take the listing. No, even you could sell it for two dollars. I, I know we, we, we could buy it for a dollar, <laughs> sell it for two, yeah. double our money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, at that time, it was the heat and, still and, and the realtors were swamped with enough work that right that they had they weren't interested in that. Uh, well, As I recall. they were contacting commercial realtors, so I, I don't think the commercial was going through the frenzy of sales that were residential was during the pandemic. Um, Vic on Zoom has something to add. Vic. Yeah, just to, all right, uh, just to respond also to Kevin's question. Uh, what, one of the things we've learned in this process is that until all this environmental stuff gets cleared up and officially resolve, um, you know, whether it's the floodway and the floodplain and the hazardous materials and all that, no developer or real estate agent is gonna to wanna to touch the building. So part of this process is to get the building ready for sale to someone, whether it's the town or developer or uh, wherever the case may be. But <clears throat> until those issues get resolved, nobody's gonna to want to touch the building. Jeff Gephardt. Good evening. Uh, yeah, initially I uh, did uh, check uh, uh, with a commercial realtor out of Rutland about uh, and, you know taking it. Uh, they would not be listing that kind of a building on the MLS. They would have to market it differently. He said it would uh, take at least a $10,000 retainer for him to uh, start looking at the sale. And he really wasn't interested in it because there are too many other towns that are in the same boat with municipal properties. We're not, we're not the only one um, like this. Um, and frankly, before even a, uh, a realtor would become involved, uh, we would need an appraisal on the structure. And that's about three grand for, for a 33,000 square foot uh, building is what I was told. At least. Thanks. Martha. Martha, you're up. It's not as a reporter, this is a, as a voter. I just have an opinion on the building. I would really, really like to see the town take over the building. That's just my opinion, simply because to me, that building is an asset to the town in that it's the only place we have that's really good for public meetings, obviously the auditorium and also the White River Valley players. Um, um, it's are an asset to the Valley and that auditorium is part of, you know, their, uh, their uh, 
place to perform, et cetera, et cetera. There's lots of lots of reasons why I would love to be able to see that we could keep that building. But that's that's just my opinion because to me it's a it's a um, an asset to the town. It's a public building. But that that's just me saying that. Okay. Well, until we could get some grant money to bring that $3 million price tag of repairs to uh, someone else's checkbook, um, I'm, I'm not sure the taxpayers really want to load up that kind of debt. So. Oh, I understand. I understand that. But I, I'm all for you guys going into um, getting this these fund this funding, if at all possible. To you know, I, I just would love to see the building kept. As a town building, if if it's at all possible to get the funding to to make those repairs, etc. Make a few calls, Martha. I don't know anybody to call. But <laughs> 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 wish I did. <laughs> hey, if I could write you a check, I would. Trust me, okay. but it's not we'll have to do it if you win the lottery. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else on this subject? Why would you need an Act 250 permit if it's less than 10 acres? Any of zoning codes? It was what was suggested by the feds. Oh, oh, oh it's already a commercial. Well, but you, but you have less than 10 acres, so Act 250 doesn't get involved since you have zoning. That's codes. why we're asking for. What did I say? A jurisdictional <laughs> opinion. Yeah. <laughs> it's a complicated setup. It was, setup, that's it was sure. the gentleman yeah. from the Agency of Natural Resources that strongly suggested we do we get this now in case it rears its ugly head later that we should have. Oh, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, we move on to... The library. No, I've got one more thing here. Yeah. yeah, it is in addition to... The, it has to do with the Small Grants for Smart Growth Program. <laughs> um, they visited us uh, in January, probably, Deb Matthews. Oh, yeah. And... Um, yeah. They're, they're looking for some grant money to start something that uh, would welcome new residents into the area, uh, provide services, provide information to new residents and, and residents. And um, it turns out when they were doing the, their uh, investigation into this grant that they really don't need to have us back them up to get the grant, they can get the grant all by themselves. They just need to designate the town of Rochester as their fiscal agent. In other words, we would handle the money. So all we have to do is vote yes, we would be willing to be their fiscal agent um, so that they can proceed with the grant. Yeah. Julie's all right with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, you handle the money. Yeah. <laughs> you the money. Julie and Kristen. <laughs> I propose that we go ahead with it. Yep. You second? I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So, so noted to them that we would be their fiscal agent. Do we have to sign anything? No, that? I don't think so. We just, just needed to put it on Not record. Yet. Okay. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, there may be something that you'll Do we have someone from the library? No, we do not. Let's move <coughs> along to the highway department. Highway. I saw John this morning. They're still doing road stuff as far as winter he's getting ready to post the roads he probably should have done it this week but he hated to start too early um, he has been in touch with all the loggers about you know back and down being being careful down early in the morning yep yeah. <laughs> and we have a meeting set up with cricket over at the riverbrook drive there's a little snafu with that that we're addressing this week uh, i meet wednesday with them um, to see, and I've also been in touch with Cricket about the wall out here, and she's going to be revising that paperwork so we can Updating put that it. out out to bid and get that started because mm -hmm. we need to address that. And that's about it. Okay, we do have the Frosties. Yeah, they're here. <laughs> they're plenty. <laughs> right on time. Yep. <laughs> Terry, utility operator. Yeah, everything good. That's what we like to hear. Mm -hmm. So we made it through the big freeze without any problems. Yeah, don't spoil it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's the next holiday? Isn't that what happens? Yeah. Uh, I believe the energy Another coordinator week. is next. <laughs> Jeff, are you ready to give us a report? Is Jeff Gephardt? Yeah, he's just unmuting. Yep. Yep. Um, 
Well, I'm doing a lot on the library, um, basically trying to figure out what it's going to cost us to uh, stop the water intrusion on the north, the east, and the southern side of the building. Um, we've got a building with a lot of lead paint on it, so we're going to have a need really for a staged uh, kind of contract. We'll have to have a contractor that's certified in lead abatement take the clabber off of the building. We're going to have some repair to the framing of the building, which we can see a little bit of it from the outside of the northern windows. Um, I am pricing materials to uh, put the building back in, in a condition where it uh, will hold up for a long term. Um, uh, pouring through the energy audits that were done on that building in the past um, to identify which things were done and and which things have not been done yet. Uh, it's a very, uh, I'm learning more and more about that building and it's pretty funky. Um, <laughs> we've got a sewer line right, that's really outside of the, the building envelope at this point. Um, we know we've got some roof leaks and it's a heck of a roof to get people up onto. I'm going to try to find out what it would take to get a lift there so that we can get up on that roof. It's 40 years old. Um, <laughs> Galvalum uh, doesn't last, uh, according to the manufacturer, much more than that. Um, and uh, hopefully, uh, Jimmy Harvey's been up in the attic of that and says that he identified where the leak was, but I don't think we're going to be able to fix that leak from underneath. So in any case, I, I am I'm looking at that and working with Two Rivers out of uh, to get a scope of work together pricing analyzed, and then there's some MERP grants. Um, the uh, largest one is up to $500,000. Um, and I think we're going to need two, maybe three different grants. Um, we will really, we will need a little bit of uh, architectural review, to make sure that uh, the scope of work fits within a construction, um, a normal bid process. So I will have a scope of work to the uh, select board uh, probably in another week or two. Okay. We look forward to that. Anything else? Uh, that's good enough for you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you got a lot of work on your hands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kristen, do we have any grant updates? Um. Yeah, we've got a couple. Um, we did receive, we were awarded, um, for the part tree grant, so that all went through great. Um, we're good to go, right? We can start whenever. We're ready. Um, and let's see, on January 30th, um, the security cameras, um, for the fire department, that grant, um, those cameras were installed, everything was completed, so I have sent the reimbursement request for that, so we're waiting for... $3,100 um, back on that. And you took my other one. Who monitors the cameras? Is it just internally? Um, yeah, right. We, um, by the way, I didn't ask you. Um, we have a <laughs> meeting with the tech guy on Wednesday night at 5 <clears throat> to go over that and how that will all work and to answer some questions that we have. It was to you, wasn't it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot to tell you that. Yeah. So noted. Thank you. <laughs> so the it, it's got a, a looping tape. Yeah, it can have way. like I'll, I asked a couple of general questions the other day. It can it's, have audio and or video, one or the other. Doesn't have to. Whatever. It will store um, for some period of time. He's not sure. It just it depends on like the activity. Mm -hmm. Um and yeah. it doesn't go to anyone's phone. No. no. No, we're not going for that. We're, okay. We'll have like a login um, to a website or somebody will. But I'll be able to answer more of that after Wednesday. And it sees two, three sides of the building? It goes to, it points on um, the two entrance doors going into the firehouse. Oh, the front. Yep. Okay. Good to know. Thank you. Yes. Could I? Point something out. Okay. Uh, Vermont is a single one-person consent state with audio recording. 
which means that if you're going to record somebody's audio, if, if I want to record any of you and not tell you, I can legally do that. But if I want to record two of you talking and I'm not part of that conversation, that is actually illegal in the state yeah, of Vermont. Yeah, sounds like a violation of open meeting law. <laughs> it, well, well, just any, any two people, so you should really keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say we record any. I don't think there's any Voices. reason for the audio or the no. audio. Oh, you know, it's for, for that, pictures, aren't yeah, they? Basically, just, like a game camera, more or less. Could be a concern. Basically. Yeah. Basically. Okay. And that, that refers to uh, private and public property? Like the, it, somebody that has a ring on their house, if two people are talking in front of their, their, their ring thing, that that's a violation? Technically, that would be a violation. Yeah. Interesting. It was what if you have signage? I mean, Isn't if you there have signage, some if you have signage, you could do it. I, I don't really know. I, I think there didn't is. Dive into the law of that fire. But. I think there is something that says that there needs to be like visible signage, and that's why I printed those out. Um, does that sound right? I don't. Yeah. Oh, um, but yeah, that's why I made those signs to put right. on the door. Well, you see it on every house. Yeah, but not at my house. I don't have any signs at my house either. So I guess I'm under violation because I've got quite a few good recordings. Yeah, I'm not sure if it applies. Yeah. Huh? Interesting. No, you can record somebody talking to you on the phone without telling them. Not very nice, but you can do it. Or even if you're outside having a conversation, you can record it. But. You can't stand there and record two people and neither one has any idea. We are recording this meeting. We know that. By the way. And that's completely Thank different. God. Oh, dear. Double recording. Okay, so where do we stand now, folks? We're good. We're any, go. any other public comment? Okay. Oh, uh, Martha, hand up. She's unmuting. Let's say you. Just a quick question. You were talking before about the town reports coming out and everything. Do you have an ETA for that when those will be issued, will be arriving in our mailboxes? <laughs> um, I dare say maybe you could look at in your mailbox on Friday. Please ignore Pat oh. and Frank. <laughs> I was going to say, I was in the post office today and it wasn't there. But, yeah. No, they're, okay. being, they're being labeled and sorted right now. Okay, so prob probably by the end of the week. Yes. Okay, thank you very much for all your hard work, everybody. And thank you, everybody, for coming to our meeting. We enjoyed it. We love having a lot of attendance, so come anytime you'd like. Thank you. Thanks for listening. We're going to pay some bills. Meeting adjourned. Yeah. Second. Uh, second.